Between the river and the sea, between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea, uh, there really are conceptually two territories. There's the land of Israel and the land of Palestine. Two peoples, each of whom can make a compelling claim based on their own self-understanding, their own narrative, about why the totality of that little land belongs to them. And for me, and I think for most Israelis, that land is the land of Israel, all of it. It's the state of, what's the state of Israel, the West Bank, that is my historic land. My emotional map does not have the word Palestine on it. For me, it's the land of Israel. But that's my starting point. It's not my end point. Before I came to the States, my grandfather took me to the side and gave me the key to his house that he left in 1948. You know, to me, that was a huge burden. Every single day going to college, I was looking at the key and wondering what does he exactly want me to do with it. Everybody measured his success by their ability to make, to have a good grades or make money. My, I measured my success by my ability to make a meaning and honor my grandfather's story without actually giving up with the future. My story is that Israel tried to make peace in the year 2000, accepted a two-state solution, the redivision of Jerusalem, uprooting settlements, and what we got instead was the worst wave of terrorism in our history. You can't understand Israel and Israelis today without understanding the profound trauma that we went through. Both, each side experienced their own trauma. Our trauma was, was the sense that this is not a conflict about the occupation or settlements or solving the problem of 1967. It's a conflict about the Palestinian na national leadership and its refusal to accept Israel's legitimacy in any borders. The natural response that I had and that Israelis generally had, was to shut down, to stop seeing. Exactly the opposite impulse of what led me on my journey into Palestinian society, which was to learn how to see as much as possible through Palestinian eyes. I no longer wanted to hear about the Palestinian narrative. I wasn't interested. I think it's very important to speak to Israelis, and I'm not speaking to someone who's from the extreme left, I'm not trying to speak to someone who are to the converted, who are look like me, believe like, think like me and everything exactly like who I am. It's very important to have a difficult, tough conversation about the past, about honor, honoring our future, honoring our past, our stories, our narrative, because that is where we start. And I hope that would lead us to have an honest, difficult conversation about the reality today, and that would lead to create a better future for all of us. Not only the maximalist uh, aspirations of both sides and the religious sensibilities, but also the fears, the existential fears of both sides. Those also need to be honored. And in Israeli society today, the normative attitude is that a Palestinian state would be an existential threat. And so I, as an Israeli, I need these kinds of conversations. I need to hear Palestinians say, you too belong in this land. Uh, it's important for me that my narrative, my story is so precious, and also the Jewish narrative and story is so precious, and it's not subject to negotiation. It's subject to understanding. And what is subject to negotiation is a conflict-ending solution that will allow us to live together in peace and security.